I'm Victoria Godso, and I lead the Customer Experience Engineering team at Grok. I'm really excited to talk to you about Grok's architecture. For a long time, we follow the von Neumann state machine of programming, fetch, decode, execute, and write results. While we've gotten better at this, introducing predictive branching, increasing clock speeds, etc., we're still seeing a slowdown in Moore's Law. Today's question is how do we continue to advance performance in the future, but still leverage all the infrastructure we have for making standard silicon? So with that in mind, let me jump into some things. What I've shown here is an image of the Grok chip die. I love this photo because it shows the simplicity of the architecture. For our building block, we have SIMD units that are able to execute a set of vector operations where our vector size is 320 elements. We then use the SIMD unit to create dedicated functional units based on the common types of compute operations used in machine learning and HPC applications. This includes dedicated matrix matrix units, a dedicated vector vector unit, and a unit for data reshapes. We also include two blocks of SRAM memory that have a massive memory concurrency at 80 terabytes per second. We laid these specialized blocks next to each other to take advantage of spatial locality. An instruction is issued to each of the functional units at each clock cycle, such that all of the units are working in lockstep with one another. For a given workload, we break the compute down into constituent operations and lay them out on the chip so that they create highly performant, specialized pipelines. To move data across the chip, Stream registers are distributed between the functional units creating data flow paths. Data traverses the chip eastward or westward from one register to another at every clock cycle, allowing for a predictable movement of the data. There are no arbiters, no queues, and no reordering of the data. This highly efficient but simplistic spatial architecture allowed us to build a compiler that has all of the information it needs at program generation. There are no synchronization barriers in memory because all of the reads and writes have been scheduled before program execution. All of the resources required are not only known at compile time, but also known throughout the program's execution, providing complete control over resource scheduling, avoiding the need to synchronize the various threads. The simple interconnect between functional units, where the data moves one-dimensionally along the eastward or westward paths, one register at a time, avoids the complexity introduced with dynamic, unpredictable movement of data. The compiler can easily map the data movement with a simple calculation of plus or minus one, without the need for the complex simulations. This is the value of building a deterministic architecture. But let's really dig into what impact determinism has on high-performance computing. For any given application, you have a peak level of performance that you can get. Depending on the level of abstraction you're implementing your workload at, you'll receive some relative amount of that performance. For example, the lower the level of abstraction, the more lower level hardware details you need to be aware of, but typically you achieve to that closer to that peak performance. As you abstract away the hardware, you relinquish control of it in hopes that the abstraction will take care of the lower level details better than you would. But realistically, this results in a cost in performance. Software developers spend a lot of time improving the variation between abstraction levels and performance, but ultimately are limited by the fundamental value set by the hardware. Instead of having hardware to find software, Grok reevaluated the problem and looked at it from software to find hardware. We started by simplifying the architecture, including minimizing the silicon area dedicated to controlling the chip, which opens up more area for the compute and memory that's necessary for data compute algorithms. Less than 3% of the silicon is dedicated to instruction dispatching. The software has complete control over the memory, resulting in no dynamic hardware caching, no hierarchical memory caching, no L1, L2, L3 caches. The compiler knows exactly what data is in memory and where in memory the data is located at every clock cycle. This level of information and control allows the compiler to hide any external memory accesses behind compute. 
With Grok's architecture, we're able to leverage all of these things. I could spend a fair amount of time going into each one, but instead I'd like to highlight two things. The diversity in our compute blocks, while still being specialized, means that we perform linear algebra operations at high performance. And the large, highly concurrent memory and ability to hide external memory accesses behind compute leads to successful acceleration of HPC workloads. In high bandwidth deep learning applications, we know that one chip is typically not enough. You might be thinking, okay, cool architecture, but don't you lose determinism when you go off chip? Typically, complexity sneaks in when you look at the system level. These systems tend to include many heterogeneous processing elements, CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, etc which means that you end up with a lot of variation in performance, response time, and latency. This variability means that there has to be a coordinated effort across the system, and performance will ultimately be limited by the slowest one. By building an architecture that is deterministic and extending this notion of lockstep execution to the system level, we allow for the ability to schedule our network links. This means no dynamic contention, no reacting to congestion or having to do adaptive routing. We avoid the contention altogether because we have a global view of the system ahead of runtime versus the conventional way of relying on the local information to be able to adjust and react. The deterministic architecture means we can connect many Grok chip processors together to achieve a highly scalable, large virtual tensor streaming processor. And this is what we mean by software scheduled networking. So how do you easily take advantage of these features? Well, introducing our Grokware suite. We offer a variety of developer tools to meet you where you're at. Grok Compiler provides that push button experience by leveraging Onyx, the open neural network exchange, to broaden the different frameworks we support. To make it even easier to get your model supported on Grok hardware, we rolled out Grokflow to convert your model with only one line of code. However, we also understand that there will be times where you need to adjust the workload for hand-tuned custom applications. So we offer a domain-specific API based on C++ and Python that provides a fine-grained control of the Grok chip architecture. Over the last year, we've added support for all of these workloads, with even more workloads supported in 2023. This slide doesn't quite do it justice, but we're seeing an exponential scale in the workloads we're supporting on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. So where to next for Grok? Well, we're focused on supporting any model there is and broadening the coverage of what we support out of the box. This includes supporting any size of the model and scaling across multiple compute nodes. And lastly, we're increasing the performance we see on these workloads. <laughs>